The Australian federal budget for 2019 was released last night. The government expects to spend about $500.87 billion in the next financial year. Here's a breakdown of what they're planning to spend it on, largest to smallest. Number 1. Social Security and Welfare – $180.12 billion by far the largest part of the budget is looking after people's welfare. Senior citizens get the largest portion at $70.2 billion. Assistance to people with disabilities comes in second at $47 billion. Families with children are the next in line with $37.4 billion assigned to helping them. Unemployed people, the sick, veterans and Indigenous people all get significantly less. Number 2. Other Purposes – $98.29 billion What do other purposes include? Things like general revenue assistance for the states and territories at $69.1 billion, paying back public debt interest costs $17 billion, nominal superannuation interest costs $11.1 billion, there's also some local government assistance, and a tiny sliver of $11 million assigned to natural disaster relief. Number 3. Health – $81.78 billion It makes sense that a large chunk of the budget goes towards health. If people aren't healthy, then the economy fails. Medical services, public hospitals, pharmaceutical benefits, and health services all receive a decent amount of cash. If we want universal health care, this is what it costs. Number 4. Education – $36.35 billion Not only do you need a healthy population to keep the economy ticking along, you also need an educated one. What I find surprising is that the largest portion of spending goes towards non-government schools, that is, private schools. Yes, private schools actually get more federal funding than public schools. As I've mentioned in other videos, even the rich get a lot of benefits from federal funding. Never let anybody try to convince you that only doll bludgers benefit from government assistance. Everybody does. If only they could put half of this into public schools, then maybe schools wouldn't have to steal my son's juice poppers for the 10 cent refund. Just saying. Higher education also gets a decent amount of funding, but still, university is not free and can actually get young people into quite a lot of debt, as I found out. Number 5. Defence – $32.24 billion What's defence made up of, you might ask? Well, apparently it's a state secret and none of your goddamn business. Number 6. General Public Services – $23.61 billion Things like financial and fiscal affairs, foreign affairs and economic aid, general research and services, legislative and executive affairs – it all sounds rather boring to me. But the one thing that does stand out is government superannuation benefits at $5 billion. I'm not exactly sure how that is being spent, but I assume it favours the wealthy and not the poor. Number 7. Other Economic Affairs – $9.3 billion Things like labour market assistance to job seekers, vocational training, industrial relations, and tourism. But the big one is immigration at $2.9 billion. Yes, without an increasing population, the economy falters. And unfortunately, from an economic perspective, Australians just don't have enough babies to keep the population growing, so we turn to immigration to make up the shortfall. Number 8. Transport and Communication – $9.04 billion Rail transport, air transport, sea transport – nothing compared to the $5.6 billion that goes towards road transport. Yes, car is king in Australia and consequently, we have a terrible public transport system in almost every city. Number 9. Fuel and Energy – $8.17 billion Where does this go towards? Fuel and energy, of course. Don't be daft. There's no need to know how it's spent. Again, it's a state secret. Number 10. Public Order and Safety – $5.92 billion Federal Police, ASIO, and Courts and Legal Services, I assume. The government can't take money from you in the form of taxation unless they have some way to punish you if you don't. That's where this $5.92 billion is going – to make sure the money keeps rolling in. Number 11. Housing and Community Amenities – $5.91 billion I guess this covers public housing for people who can't afford to rent, and programs such as the First Homeowners Grant. Although, I've heard many stories that say that this is simply not enough. 
Public housing in Australia is dismally low compared to other countries. Around 195,000 people languish on the social housing waitlist. Number 12. Recreation and Culture – $3.85 $3 billion Australia's national broadcaster, the ABC, I assume is funded from the broadcasting bucket of $1.5 billion. Arts and Culture, Sport and Recreation, and National Parks are also covered here. Number 13. Mining, Manufacturing and Construction – $3.42 billion Resources make up 58% of our export market, so I guess it only makes sense that $3.42 billion is put towards mining. Manufacturing has been falling year on year, so I suppose they are simply not getting enough funding to compete with the cheap foreign markets. And in last place, at number 14, Agriculture, Forestry and Fishing – $2.87 billion Yes, although food is vital for every Australian, and yes, farmers are paid crap all wages, and yes, the environment is our most precious resource, for some reason all of these things are considered to be not very important for the federal government. More money goes towards immigration or government superannuation benefits than it does towards the environment and agriculture. And now on to revenue. The government expects to raise $505.52 billion in the next financial year. There's only five areas, and here they are from biggest to smallest. Number 1. Income tax receipts – $342.74 billion Who would have guessed? Most of the government's money comes from individuals' income tax – $228.8 billion, and company tax – $98.9 billion. This bucket also includes superannuation fund taxes, fringe benefits tax, and the petroleum resource rent tax at a miserly $1.4 billion. Number 2. Sales taxes – $69.08 billion Yes, things like GST and the luxury car tax fit in here, but also there's a lesser known tax known as the Wine Equalisation Tax, which will bring in an estimated $1.1 billion. Wine in Australia is actually taxed differently to other alcoholic beverages, and consequently is typically cheaper. This allows young people in Australia to pick up a box of goon for like $10 and get smashed on a Saturday night, before even heading out to go clubbing. As the Australian pub rock band Cold Chisel once sang, cheap wine and a three-day growth. Cheap wine is part of the Australian psyche. Number 3. Excise and Customs Duty – $45.69 billion Things like petrol and diesel fall into this category, although the biggest earner here is tobacco at $17.4 billion. You've got to wonder whether the government really want people to quit smoking. Apparently, we have one of the lowest rates of smoking in the Western world at 14.9%, but yet the government can still rake in $17 billion from it. Beer, spirits and other alcoholic beverages make up a combined total of about $5.9 billion, still a lot less than smoking. Clothes, passenger vehicles and other imports pale in comparison. Number 4. Non-taxation receipts – $39.12 billion The government don't just make money from tax, they also sell stuff too, which will bring in an estimated $15.7 billion over the year. They must have a few investments hanging about as they receive $5.7 billion in interest and $6.2 billion in dividend payments. $11.5 billion will be brought in from other non-taxation receipts. What will that include? Sorry, it's a state secret. And the final government revenue source at number 5, Other Indirect Taxation – $8.88 billion. This includes the major bank levy and agricultural levies, but the biggest component by far is Other Taxes, which will bring in a whopping $6.8 billion. What does Other Taxes include? Who knows? And there we go, there's the Australian Federal Budget for 2019. What are your thoughts? Should we be spending more money on the unemployed? Should we raise the price of cigarettes even further to squeeze every last cent out of those good-for-nothing smokers? Should the government be more open about where they spend their defence budget? Or is it okay to keep a few state secrets? Let me know your thoughts below.